Thank you very much, everybody, for joining. Um, I usually say something like young and old, but we really do have young today. We have a baby in the room, so <laughs> thanks to Emerald for joining us. And uh, hopefully we uh, keep her asleep. Anyway. Um, hopefully we bore her. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, my name is Ian Sloyan. I'm, I'm here from the International Swaps and Derivatives Association. Um, it's a, sort of a big day, a big week, actually, for... Uh, the work we've been doing over the last few years, uh, the common domain model being open sourced at Finos, which is really exciting. Um, so we thought we'd do uh, two sessions over the next hour. The first one, sort of a, a history of where we've come from and where we're, we're hopefully going in the in the in the near future. And the second one, we're going to hear from some uh, implementers around how uh, they use CDM and, and, and why it's why it's important to them in their projects. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm just MC really for today, but uh, first up I'm going to ask my, my colleagues uh, to my left here to introduce themselves, so maybe David you could go first. Yeah, sure. So I'm David Schoen, uh, I'm Director of Market Infrastructure and Technology in the International Security Lending Association, and yes, I do wish that for sure. <laughs> my name is Gary Hutton, I'm a Director at ISMA, you're responsible for FinTech and Digitalization. I've been leading ISRA CDM project for 8 months. I also look after our FinTech Advisory Committee and I run a working group on DIT bonds. It's great to be here. And I'm Amy Caruso. I'm the head of collateral initiatives at ISDA. And um, I am really fitting, sitting in for my colleague Vernon Alden Smith, who uh, leads the CDM initiatives for collateral based out of London. So hopefully I'll do him proud. Okay. So. Um, I said I was going to be MC, but the, the, I'll do a little bit of talking at the start. We, um, we've been, it, I've been involved in the CDM project since its inception, so I'm probably the guy who needs to give the, the, the initial history lesson. Um, so the, 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 the letters or words CDM or common domain model appeared uh, in ISDA's literature uh, around 2016 in a paper uh, called The Future of Derivatives Processing and Market Infrastructure. And that is still on the ISDA website if anyone would like to read it. It's, uh, it's a riveting read it's, and really, really uh, has set the path we've followed in the last few years. Now, in the conclusion of that paper, there were next steps listed. There were four next steps listed. The first one was identify and track solutions to current post-trade inefficiencies. The second one was to facilitate industry collaboration and communication. The third one was, and here's the key bit, develop common domain models. And the fourth, which I had actually forgotten about until I checked the paper this week, was to promote open source. So by open sourcing the CDM at Finos, we are sort of completing the, uh, the, the, the steps that were suggested in that conclusion. So it's a very, very exciting uh, uh, development. The key driver for, for us uh, in that paper and something that our, our members repeatedly told us was the difficulties they had in implementing regulation. So regulations is hard, you have to do it, uh, there's usually lots of budget for it, but you've got to do it. Uh, and the implementation of regulation, particularly in derivatives market, had been quite a, a task uh, since 2009 and the, the, the recommendations from the G20 uh, meeting in Pittsburgh. So uh, how can we do regulation easier? Having standard data model, co common domain model to underpin everything, a common way of representing things was, was, was identified and that's what we, we, we uh, took forward. Also this week, not just the announcement of Finos, is uh, digital regulatory reporting, which is a project built on the CDM using the data model, has effectively gone live in production um, with one of our members, BNP Paribas, uh, using the DRR code to report to the CFTC. So it's, a, as I said, a really big week for, for, um, for us here. Um, in the, that journey since 2016, uh, we started work at ISDA in 2018 on actually codifying um, and building a, 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 a CDM in, as code. Um, and then over, the, over, over that period, we've been joined uh, by um, ISLA and ICMA who are going to take us through some of their journey uh, next. So, yeah, I think I'll, I'll hand over, I haven't mentioned, I haven't gone uh, too much into the detail, but I'll hand over to David 
uh, who's going to take us through what, what CDM is and the journey ISLA have, have taken in, in, in this regard. Thanks, Ian. I'm going to stand over here just so you can see the slides. I can't stand presenting. <laughs> Um, so Ian asked me to uh, give an overview of what, what is the problem that, that we, we're setting out to solve. This diagram here um, is, is a representation of the current state of certainly the security planning industry, but I know across the panel, our parts of the industry don't look too dissimilar to this tangled web of data representations, multi-channel uh, communication. Um, uh, and the, the tangle isn't just in between different parties in the market, right? So the right hand side of that, that mess is um, all of the different parties. They all have their own representations. They all represent, they all, have all got their own ways of representing right type of events and transactions. Uh, but even internally, the globe on the left, I pick the borrower there, but it literally could be any of those kind of parts, I guess. Even internally, Systems for different departments often have different representations of the same data, right? I can see nodding and I, I appreciate it probably if you be okay in some cases here. Yeah. Uh, but this this cause this costs us a lot of money right, uh, as an industry. So you have the administrative rework um, and the, the attempts to determine what is real and what isn't, uh, what the truth is at any one point in time. Um, and that's, you know, the reconciliation breaks you have to deal with. But it has real-world consequences too, right? The, and the risks associated with that as well. You have valuation differences and platform disputes that result um, out of this. There's reporting mismatches. Um, there's a possibility that your management reporting, your client reporting, and your regulatory reporting are all coming from slightly different <coughs> databases of slightly different representations of the same information, when really, should all come from the same source, right? Um, big one on, on people's list at the minute is settlement failures. So data representation, um, agreement of uh, life cycle events can solve those problems and result in fewer fines from uh, regimes such as CSDR. So the common domain model uh, is really an attempt to standardize uh, not just the data representation uh, products and transactions, but where I sort of see the added value, where it goes beyond some of the standards that already exist today in that space, is around standardizing the life cycle events, the Google models for the life cycle events, right? Um, standardizing the operational processes. Um, in our industry, uh, there's a lot of um, agency lending occurs, and the big agent lenders will allocate their transactions and reallocate their transactions all very slightly differently, right? Uh, we have a great market practice on how that should be done. So on our journey, which I'll talk about in a minute, we have only codified what we have set out in our agreed market practice. There is only one way to do that allocation within the model. Um, other, the, the other angles are also incorporating standardized legal documentation. If you can get your legal documents as objects within the model, then you can automate your life cycle events across camp parties. Imagine a corporate action where you plan something slightly different that each camp party you're facing. You should be able to push a button that process that corporate action on all your positions on that security. And it doesn't matter what you sign with each camp party. The application should know by looking at what you've signed legally with those counterparts, what the outcome should be. Uh, just to be very clear, the CDM is a model, it is an application. It just defines the relationships between these things and, and the standard outputs of, of the life cycle and processes. Is that all right in terms of what it is? <laughs> uh, and then, so if I talk a little bit about ISLA's journey. Um, so um, I was employed to do a pilot in August 2020, which seems like an alternative in some respects and, and five minutes in others. Um, and we beat uh, that pilot at the end of 2020 really was to take what is has has started um, in the derivative space and leverage that work to 
can build out the security measurements. So part of the part of the principle behind this is that our associations are not looking to recreate ways of processing transactions where an analog exists already, right? We don't want five different ways of doing something just because our history say, well, we did it like this in security planning, but for derivatives we do this, and for repos we do that. If the same function, if it's the same functional concept, do it once, fill it once, reuse it. Um, and Amy will talk about collateral and church, um, which is a good cross product use case. Uh, we completed a minimum valuable product, which is the uh, bottom half of this house metaphor. Uh, so that was enough to express a load uh, and the life cycle of entry free determination, uh, as well as some billing. And that was enough to um, get us foundation started. We merged that MVP with uh, ISTA's uh, model at that time. So, first time in June 2021, two product classes were in there. Um, I won't dwell on the metaphor too much because I think some people would argue that a minimal viable house should have a roof. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to pass over that. Um, in August, uh, we. Yes, sure. Sorry, we're not loud enough. <laughs> the recording we need to. All right. Um, so, the, um, uh, so we signed a memorandum of understanding between us in August 2021, uh, which is essentially culminating today. This is, this is where we were heading uh, to make uh, the model open source. This year, we um, at Isla recruited a full-time developer before we were using contractors. Um, you can meet my full-time developer, Chris, at, at our stand downstairs if you want to. Uh, very nice guy, very approachable. Um, <laughs> and he has built out the rest of our product suite, so the uh, legal agreements that we have cover evergreens and extendable products. Next year, um, so following FinOS migration, we will continue to do development work um, in, in this space. We will continue to look at lifecycle events. Uh, we are looking at some of the trade negotiation workflows, um, multiple RFQ, availability feeds, and so on. Uh, but the bit I'm really excited about is we are actually going to integrate our um, standard legal documentation, the GMSLA, and we are going to codify that and actually incorporate that and um, mesh it with the transaction and product uh, piece so that we have the formation of um, aut automated lifecycle events. So I'm quite excited about that. Um, that is a very swift overview and I realize I've probably taken too much time so I apologize. Um, Gabriel, do you want to cover your journey uh, from the ICMA? Yes, very happy to. And, um, ICMA's focus has been on the international debt capital markets the CDM, what we've done is focused on repo and collateral markets. Um, oh, that's better. Repo markets play a fundamental role for the economy. They are huge. Um, they are considered to be the plumbing of financial markets. They're a source of funding for dealers who provide liquidity, but it's also an important market to manage cash. So just to give you, to set the context and give you a few um, figures, the total value of repo contracts outstanding in June, according to ISMA's latest survey, was more than 9.7 trillion euros. That's more than 10 trillion dollars. In the US, the figure is around 4.5 trillion dollars. And in Asia Pacific, excluding Japan, according to ISMA's latest findings, it is in excess of 300 billion dollars. So it's a huge market on the one hand, but it's also a very complex market. Repos can be overnight, they can run for a few days, a few weeks, or a year. Um, it can involve um, single securities or baskets of securities that can be traded, OTC, um, on trading venues, interest can, make, can be made on a fixed basis or floating rate, so there's many moving parts. At the same time, automation is on the rise, so we've, uh, kept, uh, we've been tracking very closely the number of different platforms and vendor solutions that are out there. And in 2017, there were around 80. Now looking at it in 2022, there's over 240. And that's the number here has tripled within just a few years. So there's, there's many different vendor firms. And interoperability or the risk of fragmentation is one that is a, a serious concern. So ICMA has embarked on the CDM journey about two years ago now. And we initially focused 
Our objective, I think David has already covered the, the key drivers of this, is this approach has been more on the regulatory side, but our approach is to support market functioning, to support automation of repo markets, to reduce fragmentation, and to also provide a foundation for innovation. We heard of the, at the keynote panel earlier, use cases using DLT, which rely on a standardized representation of data, for example. So last year, we initially focused on the most commonly transacted repos, repurchase agreements, which are fixed term with a single security. So from the point of when, it, when a transaction is executed, cleared, and then settled. This year, our focus has been on the more complex uh, spectrum of repos. So those that, have, that are open, for example, they are linked to floating interest rates, that have extended notice periods to terminate a transaction. So all those transactions that have more moving parts, more variables. That's been our key focus and we are right now finalizing the project in the process of merging it together with the ISTA version so that it's a common, a common do a domain model that covers all the different asset classes and, and processes. Um, what's also important to highlight is that if you are looking to build a solution to say match repo transactions or to reconcile transaction to execute repos or there's many different use cases for it. You would have to think about you know, how to translate what actually makes up a repo, the sale of a security, the repurchase, things like price, which is a bit more complex than let's say a simple bond transaction where you have margin that's applied, uh, interest that plays a factor as well. And of course, what you can and what is frequently done, David also alluded to this, there's industry guidelines. You could, for example, take ISMA's best practice guides to repos to understand that and then translate this into code. But inevitably, every developer or each institution would come to a slightly different conclusion. And this is what's creating fragmentation and that, that hampers automation in that space. The other option is you take the CDM. The CDM provides essentially a blueprint of repo transactions, not only repo, but also derivatives and securities lending. So that if you want to build a solution for it, or whether it's a trading application or a post-trade solution, you can use a CDM that defines all those parameters. So it's a model, as I explained, that defines the, the domain, the relationships between different entities and the processes. So it goes very much into the detail and it removes any ambiguity in the process. And that's a real value of the CDM that you can provide different solutions depending on you know, what your technology focus is or depending on your type of repos that you're transacting in, but you're starting from a common denominator. And that's the value of the CDM. It's, it's a big thing, as you mentioned, for it to be open source available here, coming to, to Finos. Um, our journey is reflected here on the slide, I think, Ian, you've brought it up. So right now we are right at the end of of what we call phase two, which has focused on the, on the more complex side of, of repos. Um, but importantly, collaboration is a key aspect here. And just to echo what was mentioned at the keynote panel, the model is now, has been created by three associations that represent different market segments that naturally inter are interconnected and interact with each other. So when you use a CDM, there's less discrepancy, it's all one common model, one common interpretation of life cycle events. More importantly, looking ahead, I guess, that's now the real focus and something we're very excited about to be here in Finos, to be able to work with the community going forward, the open source community, but also members. One key focus for ICMA and the associations now is to drive adoption. We've already heard about, and there's different sessions, and we're going to hear about, about use cases but driving adoption of the CDM, facilitating the integration of the model with messaging protocols that are used in particular in fixed income, like FIX and SWIFT, that's a key area, but also how to deploy the CDM, whether it's via cloud solutions, make it more easily implementable, speed up the, the whole process. Then looking ahead as well, um, embedding some of the legal clauses from ISMS Global Master Repurchase Agreement, which underpin cross-border repo transactions into the model, some of the clauses, some of the conditions to streamline, on the one hand, the digitization of legal documentation, which is still very much in the, I guess, the analog world, but which is slowly progressing, and bring this into the CDM so it is actually a consistent, much more streamlined 
streamlined experience and, and, and operation. And then an important focus, and I know Amy, you're going to touch on this, so I'm not going to talk too much about it, is collateral. It's a key, it's a very important topic for our industry, and there's a lot of, I think, potential to work together and make it work even, even better. That's, I think, you know, these are the, the elements on our roadmap. Another one that's very important to ISMA as a bond market association is automation and market functioning in bond markets. And one of our key initiatives here is a common data dictionary to support the automation in the bond issuance process. And on our roadmap for next year is to explore the synergies to bring together the common data dictionary and the CDM. And this is in particular looking ahead at digital assets, so digital securities, to help to, to promote this segment, help it take off from an operational perspective, make it easier to create a standard that defines how a digital bond can be issued, traded and cleared. So we have a shared desk uh, downstairs, so please do feel free to, to stop by if you'd like to learn more about the CDM or to, to get involved. Thank you. Thanks for your attention. Okay, I I think um, we'll we'll pass over to Amy because she can take us through uh, one area which is in need of standardisation, which actually covers the collateral. Well, I'm I, I I've never worked in collateral, so I'm quite. It's all the same to me. Um, so Neither so I. I probably offended some people. <laughs> um, but uh, the the collateral across derivatives, securities lending, and repo markets. Their bonds move them from box to box, right? That's how I see it. And mm -hmm. my, my apologies. But Amy's going to explain a project which we're going to kick off at Finos, and there'll be a working group in the new year uh, looking at collateral um, in CDM, which is building on a lot of the work we've already done, um, but, but is going to be the first sort of uh, big collaborative effort at, at Finos, I think, through a working group. Oh. Amy. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so the 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 picture that David showed of uh, the, it's a messy situation, really is, between data and data transfer, um, is not unique to uh, securities lending, it's not unique to repo transactions. And then if you really, our, our members need to be more collaborative themselves within these three areas. I, we're not preaching to them, they tell us that, that they realize that. And so data interoperability and fast data, faster data transfers is definitely needed. So the work that we're doing around collateral uh, is one example and not to um, take away anything away from the digital regulatory reporting initiative, which is really is this flagship at this point, but I'll let Alan and Ian and uh, Rosetta folks in the Project Expo really highlight those those topics. Um, so in the uh, in the collateral space, we have two prominent use cases. One is around digital documentation, and both of you mentioned how your documents you're looking at clause libraries and and where these elements can be digitized and. Adrian and, and Georgina had mentioned a little bit about collaboration and also things that we do separately. And our documents are probably things that we can be somewhat synergistic, but there are proprietary elements as well. So we're excited though that we are working on um, uh, data digitization in the digital documentation space. And I bet Diana Boyle from Symbiont will mention that a little bit in the next session of how it can be put into use. But around collateral representation, can you imagine that a five-year treasury is not digitally represented any one particular way within all the systems of the financial services firms that are represented here today? And that's really challenging because not only when you're setting up a new firm to exchange collateral for any one of these three products that we represent, but also on an ongoing basis. And this really, we can, we can look at some examples of where interoperability could have helped in say March 2020, the energy crisis, or the recent gilt liquidity crisis, that operational inefficiencies really widen the gap of challenges during those times. That's not to say that the operational inefficiencies uh, were the root cause, but certainly there could be improvements. Uh, and not because of those predicaments, but other value uh, propositions, we do have a number of firms who first started off maybe with ISDA, and then when the Memorandum of Understanding was signed, we started 
um, expanding the CDM Collateral Working Group to not only include ISDA members. It's been very collaborative ever since. Um, and it has expanded not only with additional member firms, but individuals, say, from a bank or a vendor who may have been focusing specifically on securities lending. They got to know their OTC derivatives counterparts through our working groups. That, that really happens. We bring people together within their own firms. And as a result, there are more uh, implementation projects. And there's a number that are public that they have said, please share, like Clearstream and Bank of New York, that are really looking at how they can implement collateral representation with the CDM across their collateralized products. Um, and I'm not a derivatives person and not a collateral person by trade. I'm a marketing and PR person, so please join us. I'm going to just put it out there for the call to action of we'd love for you to join our working groups and also we have a pipeline slide that we're happy to share we'd like more firms on those so again the collaborative efforts that we work on together the three trade associations it only really works if the member firms contribute as well okay thank you amy i do have some questions but i think we're up nearly up to time um i think I'd reiterate what Amy just said about getting involved. Um, there's going to be a number of, of, of working groups uh, for the CDM at Finos uh, to, to drive forward the development of that core CDM. Uh, it only works if there's a big community of, of people behind it and contributing. Um, and then the, the, the first use case we think that's going to be uh, quite helpful uh, for the market is around the development of components for collateral, as Amy said. Um, I will pass to my colleagues to see if they have any final words. Only just to repeat, do come and see us. We, we have an expense uh, card to, uh, to justify <laughs> having flown out here. So please, please do come and talk to us. Yeah. I would just echo what's been said. I think it's a real opportunity to contribute and shape the CDM and make the most of it, even that it's going to, to be open source. I'm going to hop on David's expense card before I go <laughs> home, but um, yeah, I, no, okay. um, I'm based here in uh, sort of in New York or on the East Coast, and we do have representation in London, so we do have um, opportunities to, to get involved Great. in person and virtually. Yeah, and just before the next session, I want to, because I said in, in, in my introduction that I've been involved since the start and inception of the, the CDM. But that man over there, Sunil Chawa from Crowd East, who I haven't seen in, in a long time, is, was also there at the first meetings and arguing about all sorts of things we used to uh, when we first came up with the idea. So I, I'm looking forward, and I think you should stick around and hear his, uh, his views too. But uh, thank you all, and thank you to the panelists today, and thank you to Finos.